Hello, as an author geriatrician, uh, typically dealing with people with hip fracture, I'd like to give an introduction to how I use and think about DEXA scans as a tool to inform me and my understanding of my patient's bone health um, and in planning with them the approach that we might take to prevention of future fractures. It's tempting when faced with, a, with an x-ray to assume that the presence of a fracture uh, is indicative of bone fragility uh, and indicative of osteoporosis. However, uh, you do need to take a history uh, because a proportion of people that's presenting with a hip fracture will not have had a fragility fracture. They'll have had a fall from uh, more than a standing height or some other form of severe injury that could break a bone in any of us. Um, but in somebody who's had a fragility fracture, the presence of a hip fracture is very suggestive of osteoporosis, but it can't be diagnostic of it. It would be nice to think that you could look at the trabeculae and the whiteness of these x-ray films and say, oh yes, those bones look high quality, poor quality, uh, and to make a, an assumption about osteoporosis on the basis of that. But the problem is that the whiteness of the x-ray depends on how, how much energy you put into the x-ray machine, uh, and low energy films will have more whiteness, high energy films will appear darker. What you really want is to find a way of computing the difference between the, the dark high energy picture and the, the whiter lower energy picture. And that's essentially what a DEXA scanner, a dual energy x-ray absorptiometry scanner does. It uses very low energy um, x-rays, very much smaller than the dose of x-rays that would be involved in an ordinary x-ray. And as a result, the pictures that it produces are very poor quality, but they don't need to be quite high quality. Um, and the reports that are produced may look fuzzy, um, but actually what's, a, what's of interest in those x-rays is a process of counting the white pixels in that image of this patient's hip area. And that's what a DEXA scan does. So if you're going to look at a scan report like this, you want to start by looking at the film itself. Uh, the X, the uh, DEXA scan will um, categorize different parts of the hip, the total hip, the neck of the femur, etc. Uh, and you want to look at how that hip appears on there. If there's a lot of arthritis in the hip, there may be an artificial whitening around it. And particularly in the spine, that can be quite distorting of results and get a sense that the bones are much stronger than they otherwise would. The bone may, may be uh, stronger in the areas where there are lots of osteophytes, but, but the structural integrity of the bone may be weaker uh, and that may be missed. But you need to look at that x-ray. If you don't look at the x-ray picture and just look at the numbers, you may miss something that you afterwards regret. What the computer then does for you is does some clever maths and it calculates out, it counts the pixels in the, in the various areas of the hip. Look at the neck, the trochanter, the intertrochanteric area, Ward's triangle and the total hip. We don't really need to look at more than the neck uh, and the total hip uh, for practical purposes. And it gives you these exciting looking numbers with three decimal places for bone mineral density, which uh, are completely impossible to understand. And it calculates from those a thing called the T-score and the Z-score. And we'll, we'll have a think about what those mean. Uh, and the way it does that is by looking at the individual patient's result against this graph. What does that graph show us? Well, you need to recall that the graph, this is a graph for, for either men or for women. Uh, they're different. The graph will look different for the two. Um, but this is a graph of the typical bone density for, a, for an individual over the course of their lifetime. And, and we know that uh, through childhood and development, people increase their bone density, they maintain it through young adulthood, and then in older age, and particularly after the menopause, there's a rapid loss of bone mineral density. That's what that red line is there for, the, for the women, and that's what that red line here is on the DEXA scan. So that's the, the typical pattern, the average pattern of bone density in an average woman. The blue areas above and below it are simply a projection of the normal range. Uh, so most, 95% of patients, will lie within the, the normal range, and then there'll be a few people who lie above and below it because that's the way that statistics work.
And understanding that allows you to start thinking about what an, an individual patient's result means when it's plotted on that graph. The computer does some maths to try and make that easier for you to understand. And the first thing that it calculates for you is a z-score. A, a z-score is a, a standard statistical measure. And it, what it tells you is how many standard deviations from normal for age and sex a particular result is. That's a sentence that doesn't mean much. That's what it means. How far below the average for their age and sex is this person? That measurement is their z-score. So this person's z-score would be minus two and a half standard deviations, a z-score of might. So minus one and a half standard deviations, a z-score of minus one and a half. What that tells you is how this person compares to their peers. And I think it's really important to look at that uh, if you have a scan, um, because it tells you there's something wrong. There's something different about this person. They're not typical of somebody of their age and sex. And that then should ring up a, a bell in your head to think, hang on, should I be looking for some other reason why this individual um, has bones that are particularly abnormal? And you may already know that from clerking, uh, but or you may want to be going and having a look to see whether there are uh, blood tests indicative of, of other conditions like this. And certainly when somebody has a very abnormal Z-score, uh, this should be a trigger for, for further investigation and questioning. There is little point treating somebody with sophisticated osteoporosis treatments uh, but failing to correct their thorough toxicosis. The T-score is a different statistical measure uh, because the Z-score tells you how normal somebody's bones are but it doesn't tell you how strong their bones are and the T-score uh, is uh, devised as a way of trying to capture that. What the T-score measures is how many standard deviations the patient is not from their, their peers, but from young adults of their sex. It's measuring that distance. So it's an overall calculation of how much their bone density has deteriorated over time as they get older, plus how abnormal it is compared to people of their own age. So this person's T-score is minus 3.1. Uh, it's three, three standard deviations below uh, what it would have been in a normal person, uh, a normal young person of this gender. And that's helpful because that's a direct statement of how fragile their bones are and fundamental to our understanding of what's going on and how we might approach bone pr protection, whether we should start bone protection. Because whether... Patients have osteoporosis is defined using a T-score, and there's an, a, cut, a cutoff of minus two and a half for the definition of osteoporosis. If a patient's fallen down into that area, then they have osteoporosis. And that, in general, has been the entry criterion for, for most of the trials of drugs that are effective in trying to treat uh, osteoporosis and prevent future fractures. So looking at people's T-score and having checked their Z-score uh, allows you to get, make a, a statement of, of whether they're at risk, whether they're uh, in need of further treatment, and to know that other people with similar bone densities have or have not benefited from the various drugs that are available for osteoporosis, which I'm, I'm not going to talk about in, any, uh, in this talk. So you can see that this patient, as a result of her ageing, uh, and because her bones are somewhat less um, strong than others of her age, has fallen into the osteoporosis range. And that would imply that it would be appropriate to treat her. Of course, uh, if she's in her mid to early to mid uh, 80s, um, simply through uh, ageing, uh, an average 83 year old lady will have an osteoporosis T score. Um, t-score of minus two and a half uh, and that, that that's important because when you look at the age profile of patients with hip fracture what you can see straight away is that most of our patients lie in that sort of age range so the majority of people who will see on an orthopedic ward will be uh, there with a fragility fracture um, so we know they're at risk of falling, we know that they're at risk of having fractures, and we know that they're of an age where osteoporosis would pretty much be something that we would expect simply as a result of their age, certainly in women. There are relatively fewer patients uh, to the left of the, the, uh, the peak in there. 
and those are the individuals in whom you might be a little surprised about the presence of a fracture. You might want to question whether they really do have osteoporosis or whether they were just unlucky in, in the accident that they suffered. You might also wonder whether those are people in whom the abnormal bone, abnormal for somebody for their age, warrants a review of their Z-score, warrants an investigation uh, of um, why the bones might have been poorer. And of course, those are people in whom life expectancy is substantially longer and in whom simple regimes such as the use of intravenous selegronate, which can protect people for the remainder of their life in the age, oldest age groups, are not necessarily going to be so appropriate. So, so the further to the left you go, the more appropriate it will be to think about doing a DEXA scan, having taken a history and uh, uh, looked at the patient and talked with them. But thinking about doing a DEXA scan as a way of assessing their bone, assessing their baseline bone density, thinking about their risk, uh, and making uh, an assessment of whether there might be an underlying cause. And of course, if you do a bone density scan, you're not just scanning their hip. The, the, these patients will also have a vertebral um, DXA scan performed at the same time. And the vertebral DXA scan is important because the way in which vertebral um, osteoporosis behaves is independent in many ways of hip osteoporosis. You find people who have vertebral osteoporosis who may not have hip osteoporosis, particularly people with endocrine diseases because the vertebral uh, bone is more metabolically active. And people with vertebral disease, you particularly want to be thinking about some of the more potent uh, treatments and long-term therapy to prevent fractures. So dividing up your population, understanding your patients, understanding their life expectation and the practicality of scanning uh, and in more intensive therapies is a, is a complex issue. Uh, and of that, as a result, the majority of people, a DXA scan is not an appropriate thing to do. To, to perform following a hip fracture. But there are people in whom it's, it's fundamentally important and understanding the results of the scan when you've performed it is something that's well worth uh, uh, being proficient at. And I hope I've given you some help in trying to understand them for that reason. Thank you.